morning again. Bonjour. Ah, oh, French speaker here. My name is Martine Inactuelin, and I am addicted emotionally to my husband. <laughs> That's a confession. He's back there. <laughs> okay, um, I'm married. I have two kids, grown ups. They are 30 and 24, 23, not sure. Anyway, they are grown ups. Okay, and um, I have a master's degree, MBA, Master in Business Administration degree and um, a law degree, and have worked in French diplomacy, humanitarian and cooperation around the world, in Africa, in Asia, and a bit in Europe, let's say. I am French and Cameroonian, and I live in Brussels. And I'm here today because of Caroline, who is my bestie, I've known her for 20, more than 20 years now, 24. We met in Madagascar where I followed my husband who was posted there. Do you say that in English? He was posted there and I met Cam Caroline there. So I'm here today to talk about um, being addicted emotionally and uh, being a victim in your own life. And I've been that for all my life. I have get, uh, get married without any preparation. I have two kids, but no one told me what to do, how to do it, how to be a spouse, how to be a parent. We don't have that. No one tell us about that. I just find myself married and I'm like, okay, Maybe this person is the one who is going to make me happy. Because as a small girl, I was told, go to school, get married. And when you're married, you'll be happy. But then I was married, but I was not happy. So I started yelling at him. I'm not happy. I'm not happy. You didn't do that. You don't do this. Ah, make me happy. So... I took all the responsibility of my life and I put it in his shoulders, which is, oh my God, that's the worst thing to do as humans. My journey started over there. So, dual frustration, overwhelming sadness, silent anger in my relationship, and I felt trapped like a caterpillar. Do you know, do you say that caterpillar? So I was like a caterpillar. I wanted to have the, the wings, but I thought he was the one who is going to give me the wings. The caterpillar, the, the transformation cannot come from outside. It has to come from within. So I was there waiting for it to come and no transformation, no wings. And I couldn't be a butterfly. So I was unhappy, and because I was unhappy, my husband also was unhappy. And that, we don't learn that when we are small girls. Okay. One day, I went in a conference like this one, there was a seminarist, and he said, proactive, proactive. That word, I don't know what happened that day with that word, but my whole life changed that day. I was like, okay, so I have not been proactive in my life. From that day on, I was like, okay, how am I going to do to become proactive in my own life without excuses, without saying, is my husband fault? Is my kids fault if I'm not happy? It's because my boss said this, it's because the world said that. How can I do things? for myself, by myself, and be happy with it. So that was a start. But then it was like in 2019 when I heard that word. So it's really like very recent. It was just the beginning. Then the COVID came 
and where we, we were confined. It was like God was giving me some hint that, okay, if you don't become proactive, you are really maybe going to die. So we are confined now. We live in Brussels, right? And with my husband, like every day, I just wanted to kill him. I, I don't know how, how many of you are married. Okay, how was it in COVID with the confinement? It was awful. Especially if you are not like proactive in your own life, if you don't take the responsibility of your life, right? So I was like, dinner is not ready, it's your fault. We are in confinement, it's your fault. Everything was his fault. I didn't want to see him, but he couldn't go to work. I couldn't go to work. We were trapped together inside the house. So it was really, 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 really awful. So awareness is something, I think is the first step to be aware of something. But it's not enough. I think that God speaks to me. I don't know how, I don't know what happened, but one day I was like, what can I do to regain my power or to gain it? Because I felt like I have never had it before. What can I do to gain my power? What can I do to be in my life? Because I was not in my life. I was living like in the periphery of my life. I was not in the center of my life. I depend on everything, on everyone outside of my life to make me happy, to make things happen. Like some jobs that I had, they just happen. I didn't go like, I want this job and I go and find it. I was like, okay, go to French diplomacy. I went there. I had do this. I had kids. I had a home, but, but I didn't like stood up from, for myself. So I decided to walk 10 kilometers every day for 365 days, which is a year. That was the thing that happened to me every day. And one of my objectives was that I didn't want to say I didn't go to my work today because it's raining. And I can tell you that in Brussels, it rains all the time, like all the time. In a year, it rains like maybe 300 days. Okay. 200? <laughs> so that was my main objective. If I want to go to my work, I just put on my sneakers and I go outside without saying, I cannot go to work today because it's raining, because it's snowing, because it's too cold. And one day it was really, it was pouring like hell. And I was like, okay, what are you going to do today? So I took my coat, my rainy coat, and I was like, can I, maybe I can take an umbrella also. I was like, okay, I don't want to take it with me and keep it with me. So I just took my rainy coat, I went for my work. So I can live without saying that something happened in my life, which is avoiding me to have what I want in my life. And, uh, one of the other objectives, the goals for the work was that I can split the 10 kilometer and do it like in small step. Like, okay, if I don't have the time because I have clients, I will do five kilometer in the morning and then five kilometer in the afternoon without saying I cannot do it today because I don't have the time. So I learned to stop using excuses. In my life, I learned to split things so that I wouldn't be stuck and saying, I cannot do it because it's too long, because I don't have the time, because I don't have the money, because I don't have friends, because I don't have this. And uh, my life changed totally. I don't know if some of you walk, but when you walk, it's a really powerful meditation. It's like you are with yourself, by yourself. And it was not a walk like I'm going for like the, the speedy walk or sports walk. No, it was really like a meditation where I felt myself observing 
what I was thinking. And it was really like, it was very powerful because the, the, like, for example, the 31st minute when you walk, your mind is rambling everywhere. You're thinking, oh, oh, what am I going to have for dinner today? Oh, my child is wanting this, this thing. What am I going to do? And then the next 15 minutes, you start to calm down with the walk. So the 10 kilometers, I used to do them in two hours. So I will have one hour left where my mind was like, I was seeing myself thinking that I'm thinking about dinner. So I was like leaving something here and observing it at the same time. That was so beautiful and so powerful. And it changes totally my life. I didn't need someone else to give me the wings. I didn't need someone else to, um, because I wanted my husband to make the, the sunshine in my life, to, to bring me to the moon and do what all that things. I didn't need that anymore. And uh, there is one thing that is really beautiful is that when a transformation comes in a relationship, it gives new perspective. As I was changing, as I was refocusing on myself, reclaiming my power, I also begin to I also began to see my husband, and I noticed that I'd never seen him before, like a, another human being that was also struggling, that was also wanting to be happy by himself. I started to see him, and he was so beautiful and. I remember a particular argument where instead of reacting with anger, I paused and asked him how he felt. It was a small shift, but it changes the entire, the entire tone of our interaction. For the first time, I understood that he wasn't my enemy. He wasn't the person who was going to bring happiness in my life. He was just struggling as well. This journey gives birth to my second book, which is in French, is Je marche à ma rencontre. It literally means I walk towards meeting my own self. Yeah. And um, from here, I started also um, helping other women because in Cameroon, for example, we tend to do that not only in our marriages, but we tend to, we love excuses not to do things. I mean, that part of Cameroon and, and the part of French, we love that. We're always pinpointing other person, pinpointing other things for what is not happening in our own life. So now I'm helping other women to regain their power and um, to fulfill whatever they want to fulfill. You can't stick wings on a caterpillar and call it a butterfly. The transformation has to come from within. We are all like caterpillars in the process of transformation. Each of us has the potential to become something more, but it requires the courage to change from inside out. I would like you to go today with think of an area of your life where you feel stuck, where you're waiting for someone or something to change. What if instead you took one small step today towards change, just like I did with my works? The freedom, happiness, and fulfillment we seek don't depend on order. They come from 
our own ability to take action, to choose. So I ask you, what is the first small step you could take today to begin emerging from your cocoon? Thank you very much. <laughs>